this is a uh, global cost. So there is a subtitle, the global cost, uh, coastal ocean experiment. Um, so at the General Assembly of Coast Predict, we launched the idea. Coast Predict was 2020, now it's 2023, and we have done a lot of planning. We need to act. Now it's time to act. And so, so we have done the methodology step. This is my butterfly, I call it the butterfly methodology. We have the focus area projects that, that have condensed uh, um, the questions uh, and put them uh, in a good uh, way that can be uh, tackled from a scientific technological point of view. Now we thought we need to have a localization. So we have to finally get to the about 20 world, world ocean coastal areas that where we demonstrate that we have a best practices, we have standards for observations, models, integration. And, um, and uh, the end uh, is to arrive at coastal resilience against uh, natural hazards, climate change, uh, all the problems that we have seen, a blue economy, and so then uh, we like to also reopen after this uh, uh, demonstration uh, experiment and generalize. So this is the part where we will get the, the standards, right? We will say in, we will work in contrasting areas and then we will use a, a common methodology. So. Uh, we have to arrive at the end of the decade with a new global coastal ocean concept and standards and so on. Uh, so key issues are that uh, we can't isolate the coastal areas too much from the global ocean because uh, in this uh, beautiful uh, paper, they show that uh, uh, part of coastal sea level uh, that is due to steric effects in the open ocean propagates at the coast. And so that is conclusion, solutions that did not use observations across shelf, first observations, and fully baroclinic method model cannot be fit for purpose in a generic way. So then we have the salt intrusions. These are salt intrusions. We have no observing system for salt intrusions uh, coupled to the runoff uh, uh, monitoring system. So we know that uh, um, River monitoring modeling should be developed that consider the proper connected dynamics. But we don't start from scratch. I can tell you, since you see my age, I have been in from 2000 to 2008 in a very nice group, which was called COOP. It's the Coastal Ocean Observing Panel. So we met for eight years and we wrote four different uh, reports and papers where we found that we defined the common or essential variables that are required for a coastal ocean. We don't start from scratch because we have the global models and the regional models in some areas and they are open and free. It's a public good uh, system and uh, I hope the DCC on ocean prediction will organize all the other systems that are open and free with common format, so we just use them. This is our requirements. I think we should uh, tell them. So then we came uh, after the global, uh, the general assembly to a final statement, we already discussed at the General Assembly of Coast Predict, um, the goal. The global cost will implement the Coast Predict projects and guidance principles in a range of contrasting global coastal oceans to demonstrate the value of an integrated observations and models and fit for purpose coastal observing and prediction system that delivers products and services for coastal resilience in collaboration with local stakeholders. This is our goal, and we have to demonstrate that we can do. We have to implement. Now, the concept of the global coastal ocean, as I said, is written already in four volumes. 
where there is an accurate description of what is the global coastal ocean. And uh, these people, uh, they um, started to classify 32 uh, regions that are mainly differentiated by open ocean dynamics, but not only. There is geomorphology, there is uh, biogeochemistry, uh, a bit of ecosystem, and so on. And you can see the uh, eastern sides of the ocean, the western sides of the ocean, um, some you know, seeming close sea polar regions. We, be, we believe that we could start from this. The first step is that we have to identify these regions. We could use this and the test sites uh, by using a survey. Second step is start implementation. Nowadays, it's very important to think about uh, the digital infrastructure on, will, on where to build this because uh, it becomes uh, um, necessary. We are not anymore doing a test site where we collect the data only for the people there. We want to share the information. So we want to build a global cost of digital infrastructure, which contains platforms that are related to specific test sites. In this way, everybody from the different test site will be immediately aware of what the other test site is doing first. And also you can concentrate on all the data already, uh, which are open and free in the test site and make them available for criticism while we do the experiment. We can't wait. To do what is the global cost infrastructure in the global net framework? You know, we have a big framework, which is uh, uh, dealt with IODE, and partially GOOSE, which is called the Ocean Data Information System. It's early, but it's already there. So we have WIS2, which is the WMO Information System 2, which is internet-based, no GTS anymore. Uh, so in this global thing, we have WIS, WMO is contributing. We have national oceanographic data centers that are already connected in a loop. And this is traditional archiving data, data centers in our community, oceanographic community. We have the GDACs. These are the global data assembly centers where you get Argo specific technologies that uh, have a lot of research still done. And uh, they release the data also to the GTS, but they are specific centers. And we want to add global cost infrastructure something that will be different, I think a bit more advanced because this one will not be only internet, but will be cloud. It should have cloud. So on this, uh, say, uh, infrastructure, we're gonna actually show through the different platforms that we can actually compute and that you don't need to bring the data at home do it in your computer, but you could eventually run on a cloud. So our global cost infrastructure. And I think this is a very important step. So since today this plot was already presented, this is something that we elaborated at the European level. So you have global cost inf infrastructure. What does this contain? It contains many platforms for the different sites. So in these platforms, we have to have as a main target, coastal observations and prediction products information. Mm -hmm. And we have to decide uh, these uh, formats and everything And we have in uh, Coast Predict, a project, a core project that is called CORIS, that has already advanced in the planning of the uh, requirements. Then uh, um, we also have to have on-demand models, data analytics, and user-oriented transformation, I call it. You take only one area. Then uh, you have demo. You end user tailored products and decision support system for coastal resilience. 
And another main target is to have training and outreach material already on the platform. I have, this is Flame Workshop uh, overall idea for climate downscaling of areas. Uh, you know, uh, you start to see that in some cases, the climate downscaling need to get very large areas that are four or five of the uh, global areas that we said before, the 32 sites. But there are also areas of climate downscaling that are much smaller. And this came out of the discussion that uh, the Flame Workshop had just to offer our initial idea. In the Mediterranean, we have this. We have these models, and then we have these models. In the Mediterranean, we decided to do to downscaling to arrive at the cost, having already the Mediterranean regional model. And some of these models did not last. Some others lasted, they became much more fit for purpose and they're actually running operationally. Well, the big Mediterranean one is running operationally, but not only, you have seen, for example, the psychophobes, which is now taking this area before it was taking only this area. So Mediterranean is one region and uh, it will have uh, five or six test sites. And we have to think about, we have to go from regional structure to the coast. We can't go from global to the coast for climate and not only.